Welcome to Allies or Enemies. Today we are looking at Windmill Valley. Our copy was provided by the publisher, but the thoughts are all our own. Designed by Danny Garcia, Windmill Valley is a 1-4 to four player medium to heavy-ish weight game that puts players in the Netherlands in the late 19th century. A land full of windmills and tulips, and I assume bicycles, although they don't feature in this game. But what is in this game? Let's take a look. You start the game with a windmill board and an empty tulip patch. On your turn, you set the water level and move your windmill, and then take one of the two actions displayed. These might include enhancing your windmill with better actions, gaining cards that get you either helpers for action bonuses or contracts for in-game points, move in the market to gain and plant tulips, conduct international trade, and build windmills which connect to all kinds of bonus actions. Each time your windmill goes all the way around, you move on to the next season. And after four seasons, the game is over and you gain points for contracts, as well as your tulips, both based on the windmills you put out and the tulip beds you planted, and then the greatest tulip farmer is named. There is a bunch of built-in variability. The windmill boards are all slightly different, and there are a few different starting cards and starting goals, which definitely do help guide your focus. But the core of the replayability will be in focusing on different paths and finding new ways to set up those sweet, sweet combos. Because you'll only get 15 to 20-ish turns, you'll never have time for everything. So we found ourselves focusing our helpers and our windmill wheels on a couple of actions each game. Sometimes that means having a winding path of windmills. Sometimes our strategy is more market focused. Sometimes just focusing on upgrading your wheel or foreign trade can be viable strategies. But the puzzle isn't just on finding a path, it is also finding ways to combo the stuff in that path to access the other parts of the game. And there are a lot of bits here to connect. As usual, we have mostly played this at two players, and it does work pretty well at that count, but you are going to miss out on a few of the key points of interaction. At more players, the flower market will be more chaotic. The upgrades and helpers will get scooped up more often, and there will be more need to build your windmills next to others. At two, we found that we mostly built windmills on our own sides of the board and could manipulate the flower market as we wanted. With more players, the windmill speed and water level will also fluctuate a bit more and the speed of the game might be less predictable. There is also a solo mode that works pretty well. It's controlled by a deck of cards and while it does pretty much everything you do and is a fully functioning opponent, it was surprisingly easy to run. Easy enough, in fact, that we added it to the two-player game to fill out the numbers. And while it was maybe a smidge too chaotic, it did a decent job of filling the gap in a pinch. This is one of the most colorful games we've seen from Board and Dice. Everything is super bright and super Dutch. The windmill boards turn nicely, and the upgrades slot in satisfyingly. The tulips are great, the windmills are all screen printed, and all of the iconography is clear. Perhaps the best thing here though are the player boards, which have slots in the top and bottom to make it easy to slide the helpers and contracts underneath. It is a terrific touch, and we hope it becomes the industry standard. The only tiny trickies here are some people may not love the money track, though we actually prefer it to dealing with coins, and the disc you use for your market worker are a bit underwhelming compared to everything else. But that is a tiny complaint in an overall excellent package. Windmill Valley is a bit of a change of pace for board and dice. Partly that's because of its bright theme, but also because it's slightly lighter than you might expect. The theme is likely to be a big selling point for a lot of folks, and it's nice to get something that is off the well-beaten tracks of goods trading and cute animals. Although we like both of those, a little walk through a Dutch tulip field is refreshing. The complexity will be a mixed bag depending on who you are. 
For some, this will provide an inviting stepping stone into the world of integrated system-style heavy-ish Euro games. The turns are quick, and while there's an opportunity for planning, Windmill Valley moves fast, isn't too punishing, and you can get your Euro fix without needing a nap afterwards. However, for those that are looking for something a bit more like Borden Dice's recent Tillatum or Danny Garcia's other B&D game Barcelona, just know that the complexity is dialed back a smidge here. The other caveat is that if you want to get the most out of the interaction, three or four players will be the best fit. But those things aside, if you do want a slightly speedier and lighter heavy game with a gentle and lovely theme, Windmill Valley is worth a spin. And that is it. Have you played Windmill Valley? What did you think? And what other board and dice games would you recommend? Please let us know in the comments and please do like and subscribe and hopefully we will see you all next time for another game.